hey, I've got lots of things to share on this one. And we're going to talk a little bit about Sweden and Holland and how that fits in with everything that's going on in our world and in our country. And then we're going to dispel a myth you might be seeing out there about Fauci. And then we're going to end up with a little bit about Minneapolis that's happening right now. So stick with me, folks, and I'll be right back. Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthification Chronicles, and I wanted to start out this particular one with just kind of a memory of Herman Cain. This comes from Ben Garrison's website. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he's a cartoonist, and as you can see, he did a very nice cartoon here of Herman Cain. And he also often writes things about them. Plus, he puts them on t-shirts. So if you want to get one of the designs that he has on a t-shirt, he's got some really good ones. And over here, he's got a mask even that if you have to wear a mask, that might be a good one to do. So he's got a Teespring store. It's a really good one to follow. But what I wanted to point out to you in this one is quite often Ben will do a little commentary here on whatever cartoon that he is, um, you know, drawn for the moment. And he does a really good job with his artwork. So um, on this one, I wanted to point out a couple things that he says here. He says, I remember Cain did well during his presidential bid, and I liked him, but I was supporting Dr. Ron Paul. See, I voted for Herman Cain that time at that primary. I also like Kane's snappy suits and especially the hats he wore. However, one thing in particular stands out in my mind. It's this quote where he states he's an American, not an African American. I am an American, black conservative. He said, punctuating each aspect of his self-identity. I don't use African American because I'm American. I'm black and I'm conservative. I don't like people trying to label me. African-American is socially acceptable for some people, but I am not some people. I can almost hear him saying that too. So, you know, that's a very important point that I would like to make. You know, the hyphenations, the minute you put hyphenations in there, when you hyphenate somebody American, and I don't care what it is, Italian-American, African-American, whatever American, it changes who you are. And really, we're Americans. Anything else is just secondary. So let's just start with saying, I am an American, period. So I wanted to say that. And I also wanted to just say how much he's going to be missed. He was a good guy, one of the best. So um, it'll be hard for a lot of people not having him around anymore. And I'm very sorry to hear what happened to him. Anyway, I wanted to share this with you. I'll leave the link to Ben's site down below and you'll be able to, you know, shop if you want to and you can go see some of his artwork. He just does a fantastic job and usually there are so many things in it. You have to look at it for quite a while to find all the little details that he puts into his artwork. So there you go on that. I just wanted to say that I do remember Herman Cain and I'm really um, very sorry that he has passed away. Then I wanted to share this with you because I think a lot of people are starting to get worn down. I'm talking to a lot of my friends. I'm talking to people who are watching the news and the negativity in the news is weighing on us. And a lot of us who um, may be a little more perceptive about spiritual battles are really starting to feel it. And I think that's a part of what's going on with me that there's just a spiritual heaviness happening right now because of everything that's going on behind the scenes that we don't necessarily see. So keep it in your prayers because there is definitely a battle between good and evil right now. And we need to remember that. But I wanted to show you this because this is very encouraging. This is big, as Kaylee McEnany says, President Trump approval 51%, Obama at the same time 44%. Those who strongly approve of Trump, 40%. Incredible. This is the silent majority. And that's a Rasmussen poll, if you're wondering where that came from. So I just thought that was really worth sharing. We need to let people know because 
the mainstream media is not telling us this. They're not going to let us know that Trump's approval rating is 51%. Even now, with everything that has happened, oh, I tell you, people are waking up. They're starting to see what the Democrats have been doing. And right now, the Democrats dragging their feet about this second possible, um, you know, stimulus bill. It's not looking good for them. That's for sure. So let's go on because I have a lot of things to share with you. This one is just for pure fun. You gotta laugh sometimes. And I think sometimes we get so caught up in all the negativity that's happening, the riots and everything else, and the crazy Dems and the liberals that are saying things that it's like, what reality are you living in? That we just sometimes need to laugh. And I know some of you are not cat people, but you just got to see this one. Being an officer can be difficult. Watch this. About maybe just the possibility. Of that. Whoa. Oh. Hey, cat. <laughs> I try to get oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to move. I'm going to move you. <laughs> that's assault. <laughs> I like the guy in the background that says that's assault. <laughs> But, you know, he's just standing there talking in this interview. And this cat, this is not his cat, far as I know. It's nobody's cat. It's just a cat around the neighborhood. Just jumps up on him. So, yeah, being an officer can sometimes be just difficult. So I thought I would share that with you because it was funny. I'll leave the link to it down below if you want to watch the rest of them. They're kind of funny, too. There's one about a professor and this cat on his head during the interview. Oh, so anyway, let's go on with this because I spoke about this in a previous video and I guess they have identified 14 of the seeds that were coming from China. Remember that people were receiving these packets of seeds in the mail and they had Chinese writing on them, but they didn't say what they were. Now, they still are recommending if you happen to get one of those packets, do not open it, do not destroy it, you know, give it to the authorities. But... Uh, they have identified them, they, and they seem to be rosemary, sage, mint, hibiscus, and just basic common things. But how do you know that in those seeds there might be a few that are really harmful and invasive species? Because if you've got those, they could take off and you don't know what they're going to do. So anyway, I thought I'd point that out to you since we did talk about it in a previous video. Okay, the next one here is one that... Um, it's interesting. I'm not sure it's totally true, but I saw it a long time ago, actually, when it was first posted, and I had it on my list to share with you, but, you know, as things are going, there's always so much to share and not enough time in the day. So I wanted to share it with you. This is this guy goes through, and it's kind of long, so I'm not going to go through it, but uh, these are different times when he suggests or she, I don't know who three days, three nights is, uh, but this person suggests that Trump was displaying that these people were uh, submitting to him that they, that Trump has already won, that he's forced the globe to submit to MAGA under fear of D-class. So um, that's kind of the theory of it all. And if you go through this, he talks about Saudi Arabia and he does, you know, give some information here. He's always got a picture of something, but that, you know, was a very key pivotal moment there. And then after Saudi Arabia, Trump went to Israel. So uh, he went to the Wailing Wall. And so it's just an interesting theory here. I'm again, not going to say that's 100 percent true. I just think it's a very interesting one. This picture always gets me. Look at the look on Pope's face. He just does not look happy at all, does he? And then uh, he just goes through all of them. So like I said, I'll leave the link to this down below and you can read that thread then because I think it's well worth reading and uh, just in case you're interested. Now, somebody sent me, uh, I forget who it was. Somebody sent me a DM, which is, you know, the messages you send through Twitter and uh, they asked me where you could find all of our 17th letter of the alphabet friends posts. And so I gave him the two links. Well, Twitter wouldn't let them go through. It kept saying they were spam. 
So I had to put spaces in there so I could share them. But I also was reminded of this one that a lot of people don't know about. This is actually a PDF that's been formed. It's been put together and it has not only all of his posts, but it also has some commentary and some other things that had to do with what was going on at the time. I mean, it was started back when he started posting. So if you're interested in 17th letter of the alphabet, this would be a really good thing to download. But note, it's 302 megabytes. It's really big and it's updated all the time. So even if you have an older version of it, you might want to download the newer version so that you have the updated information. But yeah, it's it's quite long, quite detailed. It'll take you a while. Last time I looked at one, it was a thousand pages. It's probably 2000 by now, but you just download it from here. Again, it's going to take a while because it's 302 megabytes. All right. It doesn't cost anything. It's all free. You can share it freely because that's what the movement's all about. So anyway, and then I wanted to share this with you. It doesn't look like anything now because it, yeah, I should have refreshed the page, but this is a video that has to do with the science and history of masks and medicine. It's very well put together, in my opinion. It's 53 minutes long, so it is kind of long, but the first half of it especially is just so important for people to know. How long is it going to stay? I don't know. Now, this is on Instagram. So if you don't have an Instagram account, you can still watch it. It'll look a little, let me see. Uh, it'll look a little shrunk here. Today, I'd like to share some of this. It'll look like this, but if you put it full screen, it'll be fine. Okay. So I just wanted to share that so you could see it, but... I think it's really good. So yes, you can still see it. Even if you don't have an Instagram account, you can still watch it. I think it's really good. I think it's worth watching, but, um, and it's worth showing to other people because people need to see that information and it does deal with the research behind it. It does. So I thought it was very eye opening. Well, speaking of masks, Holland says um, their top scientists say there's no solid evidence coverings work and warn they could even damage the fight against COVID-19. So, yeah, guess what? They're not wearing masks and people are just walking around as normal. So I just thought, see, look, no masks, no masks. The deal is, in Holland, their top scientists say there's no evidence that supports whether they do affect it or not. So why bother? Because you get about the same results, and that's, you know, the test that the research that was talked about in this, and he really does give some very good, solid research. You know, it pretty much was saying, doesn't matter. They did a controlled study where they had people wear masks and then people not wear masks, like in a hospital setting. And they found out there was no difference. The same percentage of people got sick, the same percentage, whether they were wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. So, and the problem is when you're wearing a mask, you tend to touch it more. It puts more of the bacteria that's coming out of your mouth. It puts it on your face, on your clothing, in your hair which then means you likely will touch it more and you will transmit it to yourself again. So what your body was trying to expel is actually what you're going to, um, you know, keep on your body. And that gives you a chance to uh, actually contract it more. It has to do also with the immune system, but he has all the data in this one. There's all that data. So go through, watch it. And I think it's very interesting Holland's top scientists say that. Yep, they do. Well, um, in case you are in a place where you have um, an executive order, maybe from your uh, governor or a mandate from your health department that says you've got to wear one, this is a petition that says that we don't want it to be mandatory. Now, if people want to wear masks, that should be up to them. If they choose not to wear a mask, that should be up to them. It should not be mandatory because that really is not very um, American, honestly. I don't know when it comes to 
can they do it? I was reading the Indiana State Code, and it does appear that a health department officer can do that. But these are unelected officials that are making these decisions, and they don't have to provide any research or any um, evidence that the decision they're making is valid. And that's what really concerns me. If you're going to make a decision about my health, you better have some research behind it to back it up. And that's what I think we need to be asking our local and state um, authorities about, that where is the evidence that shows this is effective? And if you can't provide that to me, then how can you make something, a rule about something that's going to affect my health? So um, this all has all the signatures it needs, but you can always give more. It has 101,000. They have to have 100,000 for them to then be transferred onto the White House. It doesn't mean the White House is going to say, yes, of course, the people want this. But it does give them a reason to say this needs to be looked into much more uh, because if you have that many people that are behind it, it does say that that might be something they want to look into a little deeper okay and so uh, I'll leave that link to that down below you've got until like what was it August August 14th to sign it I do want to remind you of this while I'm here once you fill this out and you click on sign now you have to go to your email address and you have to click on a verification there for it to register your signature otherwise if you don't click on that verification it won't register it so I just wanted to remind you of that. All right, let's go on. Well, it's not just, um, you know, uh, Holland that's doing that. We have Sweden, too. We see no point in wearing a face mask. Sweden's top virus expert says as he touts the country's improving COVID numbers. Well, you have to understand that, you know, Sweden did the whole uh, immunity, herd immunity route and didn't shut down at all. So they're doing very well financially and economically in their their country. They're also doing ve very well in respect to suicides because they've not had near what other countries have had. Drug addictions, uh, drug overdoses and things like that. They've not had any, you know, surge in those, whereas other countries have. The countries that locked down have had serious problems with suicides and especially drug overdoses. So this is something we've got to weigh out here, folks. Does it really do us any good to save all these people from COVID when we end up losing all the, these people even more to these other reasons and that's what we have to understand that's why you know Sweden decided we're not going to close the country we're not going to strip everyone of their livelihoods just to try to stop this and yes they did have many deaths but really when you look at them in proportion to the rest of the European countries it's really not that much higher when you take it proportionally according to the numbers um you know from per hundred thousand or something like that is what they usually do okay so i'll leave this article down below you can read through it it just says that they're doing very well according to them okay now what's really weird about this sweden thing is if you search for it here's what you get you get articles that say it from usa today Oh, it hoped it would, but oh, it's not, it's not working. Okay. Uh, Sweden is still nowhere near herd immunity from CNN. And down here, another USA Today, the uh, Sweden's controversial coronavirus strategy to achieve herd immunity has led to one of the highest per capita COVID deaths in the world. That's not true. That is not true. Um, you know, there's a lot of it that's not true. And this one... Oh, it didn't work. And it, it's, but this one says, okay, this says he, this Dr. Tegnell says his strategy has succeeded. And since he kept the economy going, well, there are, there's this one. It's a fantasy solution. That's from Fortune. 
uh, Business Insider, it doesn't work, it won't work, herd immunity won't work, and Bloomberg, yo, yeah, it doesn't work. And then you have this conservative one that actually says, guess what? It does work. And if you look at this uh, tweet here, this Jordan guy, I don't know how to say his last name, the benefits of herd immunity shown in Sweden's actual day of death chart, deaths have been declining for well over 100 days. This blows up the thesis that any mitigation measures other than protecting nursing homes were needed to handle the pandemic. So I thought this was very interesting. Because, of course, CNN and all those guys, oh, it didn't work. It didn't work. It was worse and it's bad. And you go here and it's like, no, that's not what we're seeing. So um, it was very interesting down here. Get this one. Sweden successfully dealt with COVID-19 and anyone who discredits them simply does not, doesn't know the facts as they have one of the lowest excess death rates in Europe. Importantly, by not locking down, they saved themselves the indirect deaths yet to come in lockdown countries. Only 14% of people in Sweden wear masks. They have one of the lowest excess death rates in Europe. They did not lock down and almost no one wears a mask. Who got it right? And when you look at that, they're way down here on this chart. I thought that was really interesting. And this is the percentage of the masks. And they always wear masks here. And this is the never wear masks. So you can see the Philippines, 92%. And uh, Sweden's way down there. So... Um, the chart below from the New York Times USA shows the percent of mask wearing in several countries. I don't see any consistent correlation between mask wearing and a country having lower COVID deaths. So I think that's something that we really need to look at because I don't know that there's a correlation. I haven't seen one when I'm looking at it, but I thought this was an interesting article you might want to see. All right, let's look at this one because... Investment Watch here. Now, this is just a blog, but uh, it has a lot of good things on it. But guess what? You can now be fined, jailed, and assaulted for not wearing a mask. And look down. <laughs> this says, are you ready for this week's absurdity? Here's our Friday roll-up of the most ridiculous stories from around the world that are threats to your liberty, risks to your prosperity, and on occasion, inspiring poetic justice. Governors proclaim chicken wings are not a meal. The pandemic has made governors so power hungry that they are now telling restaurants what counts as a meal. States like California and New York are forcing restaurants and bars to only serve alcohol with meals. That prompted some establishments to add special menu items so that patrons who just wanted to drink didn't have to order an entire meal. But now that tactic has caught the eye of comrade governors Newsom and Cuomo. They have decided that not only is it within their power to tell restaurants if they are allowed to serve drinks and food, but these governors also claim the power to dictate what counts as a meal. The dictator of California officially decreed that buffalo chicken wings are not a meal, nor are reheated frozen entrees, pizza bites as opposed to a pizza, or any small portion of a dish that may constitute a main course when it is not served in a full portion or when it is intended for sharing in small portions. And the dictator of New York said the food available has to be more than just hors d'oeuvres, chicken wings. You had to have some substantive food. The lowest level of substantive food were sandwiches. There you have it. Sandwiches are a meal. Chicken wings are not. So says the Politburo. <laughs> yep, that's about it. A&E loses half its viewers after canceling live PD. <laughs> Amid calls for police accountability, A&E canceled its reality TV show, Live PD, to try to appease the Twitter mob. Does this seem counterintuitive to you? It does to me. Following cops around with a camera seems like it would increase police accountability. But A&E seems to think that if they stop filming the police, then transparency and accountability will improve. In other news, 2 plus 2 equals 5. <laughs> But it turns out bowing to the Twitter mob isn't necessarily good for business. So they dropped over 50% in the week after the show was canceled. And then down here, California State Universities now require social justice course. 
I'm not even going to bother with that one because you know what they're doing with that. I mean, women pepper sprays couple for not wearing masks during picnic. Okay, a couple went to the San Diego Park to have lunch. They set up their picnic properly socially distanced from other park goers and removed their masks to eat. That's when they began being harassed by an older woman. She flipped, uh, flipped them off and yelled obscenities about them not wearing masks in public. Then this woman walked up to the picnicking couple and pepper sprayed them. Oh, I just, I, I guess... So now because of the COVID hysteria, people think it's defense to physically attack strangers for not wearing a mask. That's where we are as a society. Now this one, I think if I remember correctly, I'll have to look this up, but I'm pretty sure they were candid on this. Indiana executive order carries six months in jail for no mask. That's what the original was. But they also said that they weren't going to have um, mask police out there, but they, and they, I do think they had to walk it back because they had so much, um, complaints about it. So I think maybe that one was rescinded. I think it was a thousand dollar fine. And so, and, or six months in jail. So, yeah. Um, I just think that this is crazy, but yeah, the governor has said, I know that for sure. The governor has said that, um, there aren't going to be mask police walking around trying to catch people. But anyway, I'll leave this down below. It's a good little article. It's a nice one to share the insanity we're in today. Then I wanted to show you this. Um, I copied this because it came from Facebook and sometimes Facebook is a little weird when I try to bring up a post. But a friend of mine copied this and put it out there and passed it on. I wanted to point this out to you because this is going around, folks, but let's look at the legitimacy of it. Sure, it'd be nice if it's true. It's not true, okay? Let's just, uh, uh, well, let's look at it. This is, it says, first of all, up here, ready for the rabbit hole that connects all rabbit holes? Check this out. Okay, so it was attempting to uh, get at people who are following the 17th letter of the alphabet, I think. As many of you heard, Moderna is in the third and final stage of their vaccine development. I believe that statement is true. Okay, that one I do think is true. Here's something many of you don't know. Guess who the first CEO of Moderna was? A Cornell graduate by the name of Anthony Fauci. False. Okay, that's the first one that's false. All you have to do is a little bit of Googling and you find out these things are not true. Okay, Fauci, yes, was a Cornell graduate. He, uh, and then it goes on here and it says, who was a roommate with none other than Bill Gates. Okay, again, false. Let's look, folks, because... Moderna started, uh, was formed to commercialize research of stem cell biologists, this guy right here, and then you had these other people that were part of it, all right? So Fauci's not mentioned anywhere in here, and this was 2010. Well, by 2010, Fauci had a good job working for the NIH. Yeah, he was too busy doing that. He wasn't going to be messing around with this company. And he's not mentioned anywhere. You can look this, this company up. You can look at their executive committee. He's not there. Neither is Bill Gates. You can look here. No, not on that. That's their uh, board of directors there. And these are their scientist, scientists, um, the advisors, the scientific advisory board. And you can see, no, they, neither one of them's here. So they're not connected with it. I found absolutely no connections whatsoever between them, okay? And then I found this that says, Fauci received his medical degree from uh, Weill Cornell Medicine in 1966, ranking first in his class. Two years after graduation, he began working for the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases as a clinical associate and eventually became the director in 1984. Okay, this is what he does. This is what he's working with. I mean, this is what the guy has done two years after graduation. So when did he become the CEO of Moderna? Moderna opened in 2010. That's when it started. 
and he's been working. He was the director of the NIAID, okay, and that was since 1984. All right, so you see, can't possibly have happened. He couldn't be the CEO of a company, a pharmaceutical company, and be the director of this national in you know institute of allergy and infectious diseases he couldn't be both this is just impossible i mean there wouldn't be enough hours in the day the guy would have to be cloned okay so we know that's incorrect then oh by the way i found this <laughs> i gotta show you this all right yeah here he is here's some examples because he's Judging from the buzz on social media, Dr. Fauci has earned a number of female fans. Okay, not this female. I see no reason. You know, there is like zero attraction here at all. <laughs> Look at this. She says, here's a hot take. Dr. Fauci is cute as a button and the public health leader we need and I would like to kiss him on the forehead but I couldn't because of social distancing I mean really seriously oh that just makes you want to uh, uh, <laughs> does anyone else think Dr. Fauci is low-key hot no no I don't I don't see any attraction whatsoever there is nothing there he's cute and lovable like Elmo Oh, jeez. Yeah, well, it's like the Muppet. <laughs> I I kind of like to watch a Muppet press conference now. That's about what you're getting when you've got him. So anyway, and the all the buzz is making some people curious about Dr. Fauci when he was young. What did he do in the earlier stages of his career? You can see photos of a young Fauci throughout this article, including from high school. Glossy prints of Fauci as a young man are even for sale on eBay for nine ninety nine. Oh my gosh. And he was, you know, he was just very big in sports and everything. Oh look, here he is playing, playing basketball. He can't, he can't throw a baseball, though. I mean, that was pitiful. I could have thrown it better than that. And I'm a wimp. I throw like a girl. I could have thrown better. So we know that. Now, let me remind you of what this is saying here. This is saying that he was, uh, okay, a Cornell graduate, right? We know that. And it says he was roommates with none other than Bill Gates. Okay, so... Back here, if you remember on this one, it says that he graduated in 1966. And then two years after his graduation, he got into the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Okay, so 1966, keep that date in mind. Well, guess what? Bill Gates, he graduated from high school in 1973. So, how were they roommates? <laughs> exactly when was this? Did Bill Gates go to Cornell? Oh no, Bill Gates went to Harvard, which doesn't surprise any of us who know about Harvard. Ah, uh, it seems like all the problem people go to Harvard, don't they? So, anyway, I just, uh, you know, you go through, this is all it takes, just a little bit of digging, and you find out. Then it goes on, and it says, it was at Cornell that Bill Gates designed the RFID chip um, uh, and patented it under this number. Okay, so then you go, and you check the patent, and the patent here is for that number, that's the number, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus. Now, first of all, I think it's really stupid that somebody can patent a coronavirus, a virus of any kind. It's just really crazy. And then you've got down here, you can look at it, you can see when the patent was, you can see the patent title, and you can see, you know, the abstract, the URL, and the identifiers. You see the, the corporation Chiron, Chiron, it uh, depends on whether they're pronouncing it like the Greek or not, uh, Chiron Corporation, and then here are the inventors. Do I see Fauci on there anywhere? Do I see Gates? No, I see neither one of them, and this is not for an RFID chip, so it's wrong in that respect. 
And then it goes on. Now let's go down the rabbit hole. Moderna is, was a pharmaceutical company that started in Germany under the name IG Farben. So then we go to find out about IG Farben. Oh, look. IG Farben was actually a German pharmaceutical company. In fact, they were the ones that made the gas that gassed a lot of Jews. All right. So, yeah, bad people. Definitely bad people. And they were put on trial in 1947. They were put on trial, at least a bunch of their directors. And uh, some of them were convicted. And some of them, you know, for a few years, kind of kind of sad in my opinion that they only got these short sentences I mean the most they got was like eight years but um, anyway and then there were several that were acquitted right here but if you go down here uh, the company itself uh, uh, although IG Farben was officially put into liquidation in 1952 this did not end the company's legal existence the purpose of a corporation's continuing existence being in liquidation is to ensure an orderly wind down of its affairs cuz you know when you have a corporation sometimes it takes a little while you got to tie up a lot of loose ends and it can take a while before it's actually no longer in effect and so pretty much it says that they were a shell company with no real activity until 2001 is when it announced it would formally wind up its affairs. But nowhere in here does it talk about anything having to do with this, this other company, this uh, Moderna. It says nothing about it. So everything so far, a lot of this has been lies. And so it says it was a pharmaceutical company and it's infamous. IG Farben is infamous for its mass production of Zyklon B, the primary gas used to kill millions during the Holocaust. OK, that's true. That part is true. But it has nothing to do with the Moderna company. OK, and after Ger Germany fell, IG Farben was dissolved and its assets sold off by Nazi turned American by the name of, you guessed it, George Soros. OK, again, I saw no connection to George Soros. Now, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist because he's really good at hiding some of his connections. But I didn't see it there. All right. So I did not see it. Um, it's nowhere connected with Moderna that I could find. That doesn't necessarily mean, you know, it isn't. The IG Farben, I didn't see a connection. But again, maybe I just missed it because... Uh, I didn't see any George Soros in here, but again, you know, it is um, Wikipedia and they don't always tell you all the truth, but I would think that if it was funded or if it was purchased by um, Soros, that it would have mentioned it somehow in here. So this whole thing, and then it connects it, who's a primary stockholder. I didn't look for the stockholder because by this time I'm like, this is so just lies. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein, and that's where he made his fortune. That's not where Jeffrey Epstein made his fortune, I can tell you that. So this, unfortunately, is a lie that is out there and being spread around. Please don't fall for those things, folks. Just do a couple of Google searches or DuckDuckGo searches or whatever you use, and you can debunk them pretty fast. Please take the time. Don't spread false rumors. We don't need the false rumors going around. We need the truth getting out there. So make sure what you're spreading is the truth. All right. Anyway, oh, we're going to get to the end here pretty soon. Getting close, right? Oh, I got a lot to go. Okay. I wanted to share this with you. My husband is a Democrat. I'm a Republican. When we got married 20 years ago, we both agreed not to put any political signs in our yard. Today, he asked me to get a Democrats for Trump yard sign because he is sick of the Democrats. I just thought that was funny. Here, this was the sign. Oh, uh, I think it's just funny. And I'm seeing a lot of these. Honestly, this was just one of them, but I'm seeing more all the time. This was kind of sad, especially for me as a retired teacher. Dan Bongino put this one up. Don't worry, folks. The teachers unions are in it for the kids. Disgraceful. So what are they doing? An Arizona teachers union is telling their members to write fake obituaries to the governor to protest opening schools. Here's the template they circulated to their members. And there's a little bit more to this if you want to see the thread. But, I, you know, that is just sick. That is sick. Just stop, teachers. You know, go to work. Teach the kids. 
Forget about the politics. Ah, uh, then I wanted to share this with you. I just busted the hospital I worked for, worked at for retesting confirmed positive COVID-19 patients. Guaranteed, that's one reason numbers are not correct if that's happening nationwide. Yeah, so do you think that probably is? I tend to think so. Somebody wants to get a second test? Oh, guess what? That's another positive. Let me just add it on to the total. This one I thought was very interesting. My friend works in a Texas ER. They don't have tests. You have a headache with a broken arm, COVID, because they receive an additional $1,300 per COVID diagnosis. She reported it to our governor, so I hope they're investigating this mess. So I thought that was really interesting. And this was the thread that that was on. What this guy was doing was showing there's nobody there. He went in, they're supposed to have, this was in Washington, D.C., supposed to have, you know, so many that the hospitals are being overwhelmed. He goes in, there's absolutely nobody in this ER. Nobody. There's nobody in any of the hallways. I mean, the hallways are empty. It's like a ghost hospital. And I understand that the ICU unit is somewhere else, but they got to go in through the emergency room to get to the ICU. So the idea that the parking lot is empty, that the, you know, the room, the waiting room itself is empty. We're being played. Okay. We're being played. All right. This is a really good piece here that, um, uh, the OAN did, and it's on big tech censoring White House on potential COVID-19 cure, cure. So if, you know, big tech is keeping a possible cure from the American people because they want to stop that from being put out there, you know, they want to stop doctors from talking about it, and they're censoring people that talk about it, then hmm, shouldn't they be held liable for that? I don't know, but it's a really good piece here. I'll leave the video down below for you. This is something that should concern us too, because guess what deal has been made with Big Pharma? Yeah, they're going to be exempt from any vaccine liability claims. Oh, you should read this article. <laughs> it just makes you want to... Uh, it, it's frustrating. It really is. Okay, and we're, we are getting down to the end here. So <laughs> anyway, I wanted to share this Breitbart article with you because guess what? Minneapolis Police Department advises residents to give in to criminals. So here we are, Minneapolis, and they are pretty much saying, we're not going to help you. The police are not going to be able to help you. So your best bet is just to give in to the criminals the Minneapolis Police Department is advising residents of the city to be prepared to give up your cell phone and purse wallet if approached by robbers and do not argue or fight with the criminal. Do as they say um, because they know they're not going to be able to help them. This is the, the Hennepin County, County Police and Fire Monitoring. And uh, yeah, they went through and they said, look, another email on how to be a perfect victim and Minneapolis crime just came out. But wait, Mayor Fry says Minneapolis is a safe, vibrant place. If it's so safe, why do they have to tell us this? Look at all these things. Robbery prevention tips, carjacking prevention tips. But if it's such a safe place, <laughs> why would you need this? And then down here, to protect with courage, to serve with compassion. Oh, but hey, we're not going to help you out. If anything happens, don't call us. <laughs> oh, just, yeah. Just if the crimes come at you. Well, part of it too is they are now, um, some of the places are starting little militias in some of these towns. Um, they're starting to just kind of get together and say, look, we're not going to let this happen. So they've got some people that are uh, carrying and doing going to do the work of the police if the police aren't going to do it, which then sets things up for being, you know, possibly a more destructive and more dangerous scenario, depending on how well trained the people are. You would hope the cops would be a little more trained than just the ordinary citizen, but Minneapolis city government tells residents to be ready to give up their phones and wallets and to always cooperate with 
criminals. And again, there it is. And if you want to just see these tweets, you can click on the tweet, you know, click on that and it'll open it up in another thing. So yeah, that's the problem right there. And I think it's just sad that when we're talking about our rights, we have a right to be safe. I think we have a right to be safe. I mean, how can you pursue happiness if you're not safe in your own home? Well, the last thing I want to leave you with here is, guess what? The feds are investigating flight logs of all planes that flew to Epstein Island and nearby airfields, including private jets and commercial aircraft. Oh, we're not just looking at the Lolita Express anymore, folks. We're looking at them all. This should be good. Lolita Express was just one of hundreds of planes transporting kids and you know who. Spoiler, Oprah's jet at least 11 flights there. Yeah, that should be good. You know, you can't say she was aboard, but boy, it was her plane that kind of sets things up for an investigation. So I think it's really interesting that yes, they are investigating flight logs of all those planes. That should turn up something really fun. So interesting at least, that's for sure. All right, that's what I've got for you on this one, folks. I wanna thank you for stopping by and I'll see y'all later. 